Okay, I'd like to call the MPO policy committee meeting to order for November 8th, 2024 at 1.30 p.m. Uh, we'll begin with introductions to my left. Hi, Colleen Kinsey, representing the Bloomington Plan Commission. Lisa Ridge, Monroe County Highway. Hi, uh, Doug Horn with Blooming Bloomington Public Transit Corporation Board of Directors. Dan Swalford, Ellettsville Town Council. Courtney Daly, Bloomington Common Council. Jason Bannon, Indiana University. Go Hoosiers. <laughs> Beat me to that, Jason. Um, and we have online Nate. Good afternoon, everybody. Nate Nichols, City of Bloomington Public Works Department. Proxy today for Director Adam Wason. Thank you. Um, did we see Becky Pecker yet? Okay. Becky, did you want to introduce yourself? All right, so we will move on. Okay. Hey, Nate, can you hear us? Yes, I'm having no problems. Can you hear everybody? But I had comments that couldn't hear us, so just double checking. Good on my end. All right, moving on to approval of the meeting agenda. I move approval of the agenda. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Do we have any discussion on the agenda? Any public comment? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Bannock. Yes. Daly. Yes. Horn? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Packer? Ferris? Ridge? Yes. Swafford? Yes. Nickel? Yes. Seven zero one. All right, moving on. Approval of minutes for September 13, 2024. I need a motion and a second. I move to approve the minutes for September 13, 2024. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Do we have any discussion on this item? Any public comment? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Daly. Yes. Horn. Yes. Kinsey. Yes. Packer. Ferris. So, correction, I actually approve the agenda. And I abstain from my approval of minutes. Okay. Ridge. Yes. Swafford. Swafford, sorry. Abstain, was not a present. Nickel. Yes. Bannock. Yes. All right. Six zero one. All right. Communications from the chair and vice chair. The only thing I was going to add was the go IU tomorrow to become eleven and zero. So, uh, moving on. Reports from officers and/or committees. Um, Nate, do you have anything from the technical committee? Yes, I can give a brief update. We met last month and recommended approval for the items that are on our business today. And also just uh, about the safety targets. Uh, again, we, we certainly appreciate the position in depth in and the targets, but again, we felt as a TAC that the goal ideally would be zero fatalities and zero injuries. And I think MPO staff has our, our exact language on that, but um, you know, certainly appreciate their pers perspective, but uh, we just wanted to reiterate our position as well. Um, do we have anything from Sarah for the Citizens Advisory Committee? No, uh, we did not have a quorum at the Citizens Advisory Committee in the last meeting. All right, 
Uh, reports from the MPO staff. The first is the 2050 Metropolitan Transportation Plan. Okay, 2050 Metropolitan Transportation Plan. We will have a draft document out. By the end of this month, the end of November, we'll have a comment period that'll begin on November, I'm sorry, on December 5th and go till January 6th. That's the 30 day public comment period. The Metropolitan Transportation Plan is a 20, 20, 25 year vision for what we anticipate in the way of needs, wants and needs for the urbanized area and also for the metropolitan planning area. Um, our consultant staff has, uh, has that 99% done. Uh, like I said, look for an email probably next week. We hope to have that emailed to you by Friday of next week. Um, next thing is, oh, public, yeah, public input opportunities. Uh, from November 10th to December 9th, this is for the Transportation Improvement Program, which we have before you in a draft form today, fiscal year 26 to 20, 2030. Uh, we will post that on the website today. The legal advertisement begins on Sunday and Monday for the 30-day public comment period. Again, we'll have a public input meeting on December 5th for the Transportation Improvement Program. We'll also have a public input meeting on December 5th, same time, same date, same location for the Metropolitan Transportation Plan. Questions, anybody? I'll be happy to answer those. Questions for staff? All right. Um, and for the record, Sarah Ryder, Band Vice Chair, has joined us. Um, seeing no old business, we will move on to new business, uh, the NDOT Annual Performance Measures. Okay, the NDOT in Performance Measures, which we had, I believe we adopted this in August, September of this year. Um, Shortly after adoption, Department of Transportation came back to us and said that the targets had actually moved in that they are lower, somewhat lower than what we'd initially approved in earlier this year. So let me read those to you as we go through them. Uh, for, well, it's, we also have a memo in the packet explaining what the changes are. Uh, target number one approved by approved in July by the policy committee and what we're asking for now is the same total number of fatalities 812.4 the vehicle miles of travel per hundred million vehicle miles of travel or VMT previously it was 870.25 it's now 891.27 in other words traffic has increased the rate of fatalities was previously 1.032. It is now 1.009. That went down because traffic went up and fatalities held constant, or at least their projection held constant. Number of serious injuries, 3,031.9. That remains unchanged at 3,031.9. The rate of serious injuries per 100 million vehicle miles of travel that was 3.484, it's now down 3.402. The number of non-motorized fatalities and serious injuries remained unchanged in both versions, 363.4 and 363.4. And then uh, I wanted to add the final note here too that these targets are required by Congress as part of the legislation uh, for the U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Highway Administration, and all state agencies, transportation agencies. And these targets represent what they foresee in calendar year 25, which begins on January 1st. And they're showing a 2% reduction over the current 24-year. Current Questions? Um, yeah. So certainly increasing the vehicle miles traveled um, makes the percentage look so much better. We're almost down to one. Um, and I'm wondering 
when the federal government looks at our performance with the targets, is it for the total number of fatalities versus the rate of fatalities? What, what are they actually looking at that we failed last time in terms of targets? Total, they're looking at the total number of fatalities. It's not the rates. Uh, the rates make a difference because traffic is growing as it's increased every year since the pandemic has recovered back to normal level. It's not fully normal. Traffic is still growing at a slower rate than what it previously did in 2019, and that's statewide and nationwide for that matter, and also here in our local area. And are they, um, I guess, is the projection that indeed we will continue to have this slower increase in vehicle miles traveled, and then hopefully a decrease also in our fatalities. Um, and how are they seeing, is anyone projecting exactly what they fatal, we saw a real rise when vehicle miles traveled was quite low during the pandemic. Um, are we seeing that reciprocal change actually? In calendar year 24 to date, as of the end of October, yes. Uh, the trend line is showing a downward trend uh, for calendar year 24, and it looks like the Department of Transportation will meet its goal for, or its target for fatalities by lowering fatalities in current year 24. I can show you the data later on. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Okay, Jillian. All right, I guess I want to understand, what does this mean now, these revised projections? What, what does it mean for our work? It's just a point of information that they've been revised, or? They've, they've been revised. Um, the Department of Transportation has these goals, which they've specifically, well, the goals that they've set out there for calendar year 25, if they fail to meet these goals, there will be a penalty for the Department of Transportation. They will reduce surface transportation block grant funds, which are the largest source of funding for projects in the state. They'll reduce that and increase funding for uh, highway safety improvement program funds. In other words, they'll redirect everything away to higher, higher investment in safety. So that's the carrot and that's the mm -hmm. stick, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. I just wondered if there was um, something more behind the, the revision in the numbers, but it sounds like it's just a numeric adjustment. Yeah, yeah the, the adjustment here is just in terms of traffic. Okay. Traffic was growing slower at what, they have, what they're projecting, what they had originally projected back in August, okay. July of last year, or of this year, I'm sorry. Targets. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval. Um, any comments from this board? Any public comment? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Four. Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Ferris? Ridge? Yes. Ryder Van? Yes. Yes. Swafford? Yes. Nickel? Yes. Bannock? Yes. Daly? Yes. Nine zero. All right. Uh, moving to item B, 2024 to 2028 TIP amendments. Okay, one moment while I scroll down here. Okay, we have several amendments for the Bloomington Transit uh, operation. Uh, the first one is purchase and support of maintenance vehicles. Um, originally, it was 
what, well, you'll see two of them there. Uh, the original application we had from, the, from Bloomington Transit showed a total of um, 75,000 and 18,750, or a total of 93,750 for the purchase of support and maintenance vehicles. The proposed amendment is that that would increase from to 132,000 um, in FTA funds and then 33,000 in local funds for a total cost of 165. The old number is 93,750. The new number is 165, 165,000. So that's an increase from previously what we had had by substantial amount. Second amendment we have is for the purchase of 35 foot electric buses and charging equipment. Uh, previously, that had a total of $5.1 million. The proposed change would increase that to $5.271. We have another amendment here, land acquisition for the Grimes Lane facility. The previous, uh, well, the current transportation improvement program has no money in fiscal year 2025, and what they're doing is they're shifting this from 2024 to 2025. 2025, they're looking at a land acquisition for, for the service and the fleet facility of going to $12,500. It's slightly less than what they had previously had. And those are the three amendments. Bottom line is they're accelerating the movement toward a new facility. <laughs> Any questions, comments from the board? Just a little clarifying question. So these amendments reflect changes in cost of these? No, just what's being allocated. Just being what's okay. allocated, yeah. There are okay. no, I mean, the costs have gone up. They've just become more refined. Okay, is what they've done. I mean, when they put together the cost, for example, the purchase of the 35-foot electric buses and charging equipment, when they initially put that together, they thought it would be uh, 5.1 million dollars, and instead it's going to be 5.271 million. Uh, it's a little more refined just simply because they're, they're, they have cur more current estimates. Okay. Uh, for the land acquisition for the Grimes Lane, same issue. Initially, they had budgeted $12,560,000, and now they've got it refined down to $12,500,000. For the purchase of the support and maintenance vehicles, Originally, they thought that would cost 93750 Instead, it'll be 165000 And that's not surprising since uh, the smaller and the smaller support and maintenance vehicles, the prices have gone up dramatically on that because of supply chain issues. OK. All right. Okay. All right. Um, move approval of the TIP amendments. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any more comment from the board? Any public comment? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Kinsey. Yes. Ferris. Yes. Ridge. Yes. Writer Band. Yes. Swafford. Yes. Nickel. Yes. Bannock. Yes. Daly? Yes. Horn? Yes. 9 0. Uh, moving to item C uh, Bloomington Monroe County MPO draft fiscal year 2026 to 2030 transportation improvement program. This is just the draft document. It, it's out here for, well, the legal advertisement will be in the Sundays and Mondays newspaper. 
beginning of the 30 day public comment period. We can't hear you, Patrick. Could you talk into the mic? I'm sorry. I had it turned off. Okay. Public comment period uh, for this will begin with the legal advertisement in Sunday's edition of the Herald Times and then in the Monday edition. Public comment period will go until December 9th. Uh, from the applications that we received, we received applications from Rural Transit totaling $9,770,000. Received applications from Bloomington Transit for $151,370,000. Received applications from Monroe County for $28,600,000. Received applications from the City of Bloomington for $57,700,000. And then from the Department of Transportation, the applications we received totaled $230 million, $230.3 million. Uh, the total cost of all projects shown here in the draft transportation improvement program is $474 million and $750,000. I rounded the cents out. Uh, now, on these numbers, you're saying, wow, those are big numbers. Well, they're also, for the local projects, Rural Transit, Bloomington Transit, Monroe County, and City of Bloomington, there's excess local match in here. So these aren't all federal funds when I read out those large numbers. For the Indiana Department of Transportation, those are all real numbers. Uh, they got those to us late. We were supposed to have had those by the first part of April, I'm um, first part of October. Instead, we didn't receive them until October 15th. We didn't have them into the document until a week ago today, for that matter. Uh, highlights. Uh, Rural transit focusing on operations support for 26 through 30. Bloomington transit, not only operations support, but also new vehicles and land acquisition for the new facility, which they're moving forward as quickly as possible. Monroe County, the emphasis is on bridges this year. On city of Bloomington, their emphasis is, well, yeah, Monroe County, I'm sorry, emphasis on bridges and bridge rehabilitation, bridge replacement. City of Bloomington, their focus is on safety in terms of uh, crosswalks, uh, I'm sorry, crosswalks, curb cuts, and uh, modernization of High Street. And then the big one in there, the big two in there actually, are for the col College and Walnut corridors uh, where those will be improved also modernized, they'll be modernized, I'm sorry, I won't say improved, I'll say modernized. And those are out there in the outlying years, which is a good point for me to remind you of that the fiscal year 29 and 30 are called illustrative years where they have no guarantee for funding whatsoever. Uh, the Department of Transportation's emphasis is almost 100% on safety uh, as opposed to previous years. Uh, there's a large investment in the traffic management system, and the traffic management system is designed to increase the safety, not all the safety of the overall statewide transportation system, and also advise uh, motorists of congestion and using alternative routes. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. question. So I know it's always been our goal to be pretty financially constrained on, on this. Um, so is there a reason, so when you get out to 29 and 30, I know it's just an estimate, um, and STBG funds usually typically stay around the 3.1 million. Um, would we have, on the City of Bloomington summary table, why are we keeping STBG at 6.4 million and not maxing it at the 3.1 and putting it into their local allocated funds? Sorry, which table, which page? Um, it's the City of Bloomington fiscal year 2026, 2030, just their summary. Page 19. Um, well, 44 of 124 on my screen. Okay. Um, just looking at the STBG funds that are to be used, they're requesting 6.4 million. 
when typically we always have 3.1 million available? Why we would put ourselves in over That's those, those, those are, lines? They're overmatching. They're overmatching with, with it. So with, my question would be, why would we not put their overmatch into their local allocation? Oh, it should be. You're right. Good point. Yeah, they're overmatching. Okay. And the overmatch comes in with um, College and Walnut Corridors. Um, I believe it's something like a 60 to 70% local versus 30%, 40% STPVG. And those are, those estimates for 29 and 30 are what I would call gross. Yeah. Far I, from refined. If I was looking at this and didn't see the previous table, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's $6 million of STBG funds available out there. And no. We really know that there's not. No, no, no. Okay. And which, which also brings up another point, too, in that we, the staff, did not fiscally constrain any of these projects. We were given budget numbers in August, and those budget numbers are lower for budget for carbon reduction program, highway safety improvement, protect program, section 164, surface transportation block grant, and transportation alternatives. The numbers they gave us for 26 through 30 were lower than what we currently have in fiscal year 25. And I asked twice if those are the numbers they wanted us to use, and they said yes. I said okay. Uh, but then we expect what I would call real numbers in January. And when, when it comes around to the real numbers in January, then we'll approach Monroe County and City of Bloomington on the fiscal constraint issues and let, let the two parties resolve it themselves. But okay. this, is, this is fiscally unconstrained. I'll say that out loud. Thank you. Sure. Sarah? Um, given that these are physically unconstrained numbers in the future, and given that we just went through an election, um, <laughs> seeing what we've seen in the past, what can, since you, of course, have a magic crystal ball right there, what would you imagine when we get our next transportation bill will actually happen with these numbers? Well, the numbers we, we will receive in January of 2025 will be the fiscal year 26 numbers. The current legislation, the IIJA, or Infrastructure and Investment Jobs Act, or also known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act, I imagine that'll go away. That term will go away. But that reauthorization is up starting then, and so the negotiations will begin July 1st of 2025 on what the next four to five year transportation program will look like. And nobody but nobody has an idea of what that will look like. Uh, I, I can't tell you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Jillian? I have a question just about how one can learn more about some of the specific projects that are indicated. For example, beginning on page 23, there are several projects that are identified as being Bloomington specific projects. and. I think there's been, you know, we're all probably aware of the um, work that's being done to plan and, and imagine what some of the, um, for example, the College and Walnut corridor improvement is. But I wonder if there's a way to look up some of these projects, namely the North Dunn Street multi-use path. How, how might someone learn more about this? I know it's not. You know, there's, I don't know what this local 100,000 at 2026 indicates, but it looks like the bulk of it is all in 2028. Yes. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so. I mean, this is a, well, this project was previous in the previous, current TIP. It was in the current TIP, uh, but when the First Street project failed the construction letting uh, a year ago, then they pulled it completely back and moved up the First Street project as a higher priority, given the Hopewell site development. So, yeah, the 100000 for right-of-way is what I would call nominal right-of-way along the corridor, and that would be north of the bypass yeah. because the, the right-of-way is narrower in that area. Uh, they're looking at a protected... That's the east side? The east, east side, side, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, east side, yeah. Yeah, east side of Dunn. Yeah, yeah, north, north of the bypass, the east side of the roadway. Uh, buying the parcels there that would tie in eventually to the to the park. The idea is to develop a direct connection to the park. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they've they've put it out here in fiscal year 28 with the hope that reauthorization will be there, so that way the funding will be there for that project. For the crosswalk safety improvement projects, they can't tell you which ones they are yet. <laughs> That's that hasn't been scoped out yet. Same with the downtown curb ramps. They can't tell you the exact location of those because those haven't been scoped out yet okay. either. So um, if, if, if a citizen wanted to know more about these, where is, is there a place where they could get some more information about them? City engineer, city engineer's okay. office and city engineering department. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, these are all preliminary right now. That's why I'm sorry there's not more available. Okay, seeing no more questions, comments? We don't need a vote on this. Pardon? No vote on this. No. Okay. Um, I did want to just um, reiterate that the public comment period for this is November 10th to December 9th, and the public input meeting is December 5th from 5 to 7 p.m. And that that public meeting is the MTP as well as the TIP. Good point. Yes. Uh, a meeting for the Metropolitan Transportation Plan and the Transportation Program will both be on December 5th from 5 to 7 o'clock right here in this council chamber. Thank you. Um, public comment on matters not included on the agenda. Uh, communications from committee members on matters not included on the agenda. Guys are too quiet. Um, upcoming meetings. Technical Advisory Committee will meet on November 27th at 10 a.m., also hybrid. Citizens Advisory Committee will meet November 27th at 5.30 p.m., also hybrid. And the next Policy Committee meeting will be December 13th, 2024 at 1.30, um, and that would be hybrid. Um, and the last item on the agenda is adjournment. Move to adjourn.